Hey everybody, I'm Joshua Oro, the Mustang Prince, and welcome to Mustang Prince Oro Reports. Well everybody, today is March 14th, and for this episode, I think it's time we take one last visit to Bikini Bottom, the home of SpongeBob SquarePants. Now, to sum it up, I still think SpongeBob's TV series on Nickelodeon was pretty fun during the first few seasons, but then, like Simpsons, South Park, and other long-running animated shows, it kind of got old and it overstayed its welcome, and it hasn't been really the same since Steven Hillenburg left the staff and later passed away. However, I did have fun while blogging SpongeBob's second theatrical movie from 2015 and his third movie, which got streamed to Paramount Plus last year. However, over the several months since I blogged those two movies, several commenters have asked me to do a full blog on SpongeBob's first theatrical movie. But question is, does it still hold up these days? Well, let's dive underwater and find out. Released on November 19th, 2004, the movie is The SpongeBob SquarePants Movie. Now, on to the plot of the movie. In this lively animated adventure, not long after the grand opening of The Krusty Krab 2, Plankton has stolen King Neptune's crown and has blamed it on SpongeBob's boss, Mr. Krabs. So, SpongeBob, along with his best friend, Patrick Starr, go on a quest in six days to retrieve the crown from the Forbidden Shell City to prevent his boss from being executed. Along the way, the two goofballs must face many evildoers, such as crooks, killers, monsters, and a giant cyclops while using their brains and their bronze. Now, what are my thoughts on the movie? Well, I love this movie ever since I saw it in theaters with my grandmother and sister, and I still love it now. But to further explain why I still love this movie, let's move on to Mustang Notes. The movie was directed, co-written, and produced by series creator Steven Hillenburg, with live-action sequences directed by Mark Osborne. Hillenburg accepted an offer for a film adaptation of SpongeBob SquarePants from Paramount Pictures in 2002 after having turned it down multiple times during the previous year. He assembled a team from the show's writing staff, including himself, Derek Dryman, Tim Hill, Ken Osborne, Eric Springer, and Paul Tibbet. And they structured the movie as a mystical hero's journey that would bring SpongeBob and Patrick to the surface. The film was originally intended to serve as the series finale, but then Nickelodeon ordered more episodes of the series as it had become increasingly profitable. So, unfortunately, Hillenburg resigned as showrunner with Tibbet taking his place. Also to note, after its theatrical release, the movie grossed about $141 million worldwide, becoming the sixth highest grossing animated movie of 2004. Now, in my opinion, the movie's animation is absolutely classical due to it staying true to the show, and watching this movie at home really makes me feel like I'm watching a longer Spongebob episode, in a way. Plus, the live-action sequence on the surface is very well done, especially during that tear-jerking moment at Shell City, which was, in reality, a marine gift shop. Also, I never really expected that when I saw the movie in theaters. And I also thought the coolest part of the movie was when David Hasselhoff gives Spongebob and Patrick a ride back to Bikini Bottom, motorboat styled. Also, I like the fact that most of the movie is a six day long road trip. And while it can be pretty dangerous with tough thugs who hate bubbles, a monstrous frogfish using an ice cream stand as bait, and a monster-infested hazardous trench, I thought it was still worth watching, even if you're a kid. Oh, and speaking of which, I like how this movie gives a decent message regarding a childhood personality, no matter how old you are. And while I still have that, even at the age of 31, at the same time, I also know when to be funny, and I know when to be serious at times. And now let's talk about the movie's song numbers. And in total, this movie has three. First is the classic SpongeBob SquarePants theme song, which is sung by a crew of pirates as they sail to the surf movie theater after finding a treasure chest with movie tickets inside. To me, 
This is my favorite version of the show's theme, and sometimes I can't help but sing along. Still, ever since my childhood, I still wonder what is up with SpongeBob and pirates. I mean, was Patchy the Pirate not enough? Next is Now That We're Men, sung by SpongeBob and Patrick when they travel through a hazardous trench inhabited by many sea monsters. This song happens after Princess Mindy bestows seaweed mustaches onto them. And in my opinion, while this is a pretty good song, especially when the monsters join in, I realize that I think SpongeBob and Patrick didn't really need mustaches to prove that they're men. In fact, I think they really had that manliness all along. The last song to talk about is the Goofy Goober song. Now to me, while the song sung at the ice cream party boat is kind of something that would be sung at a kid place like Chuck E. Cheese, my favorite version of the song would have to be the rock and roll version, which is actually a parody of Twisted Sister's I Wanna Rock song, which is sung during the film's ending climax. And in my opinion, this version is absolutely awesome. And I like the part where SpongeBob uses his rock and roll music to save all of his friends from Plankton's mind control bucket helmets. It's like they say, Music is a weapon. And now, let's move on to the characters and the voice actors who brought him to life. SpongeBob SquarePants is voiced by veteran voice actor Tom Kenny, who's best known from other animated shows and movies like Cat Dog, The Powerpuff Girls, Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends, and many others. Now, while SpongeBob has a childlike personality due to him having a hobby of blowing bubbles, eating ice cream, and worshiping Goofy Goober, at the same time, that's what makes him such a charming character and a great fry cook. Plus, I like that SpongeBob is determined to retrieve King Neptune's crown in order to save Mr. Krabs from Neptune's wrath. Also, while SpongeBob is a flunk at boating school, I think it's pretty cool that SpongeBob doesn't really need a driver's license to drive the paddy wagon, which in my opinion is an awesome vehicle, by the way. Next is SpongeBob's best friend, Patrick Starr, voiced by Bill Fagerbake. Now, I'm not really sure if I said this before in my previous two SpongeBob movie blogs, but I must admit, Patrick is my favorite character in the SpongeBob TV series. Yeah, he can be rock stupid at times, but he's still a very loyal character, and I think his friendship with SpongeBob is really nice. And this movie is absolutely no exception. Plus, I like that Patrick knows how to make SpongeBob feel better whenever he feels sad. Next we come to SpongeBob's sourpuss neighbor and co-worker, Squidward Tentacles, voiced by Roger Bumpus. In this movie, Squidward becomes manager of the Krusty Krab 2, mainly due to his maturity. However, while SpongeBob and Patrick are on their mission, Squidward is the only character in Bikini Bottom who's suspicious after noticing everybody wearing chum bucket bucket helmets. And after finding out where the helmets came from, Squidward easily figures out the truth about Plankton stealing Neptune's crown and framing Mr. Krabs. And he goes to the chum bucket to confront him. However, the one stupid thing he did during that moment was tell Plankton that he'll be reported to King Neptune. Next up is SpongeBob's employer, Mr. Eugene Krabs, voiced by Clancy Brown, whom I remember from The Little Mermaid 2, Return to the Sea, Annabelle's Wish, Nightmare on Elm Street 2010, Recess Schools Out, Thor Ragnarok, and of course, Tangled the Animated Series. Now, like in the show, Mr. Krabs has the personality of a big-hearted pirate, and I like that he treats SpongeBob like his own son. Still, it wasn't very nice that he didn't give SpongeBob the managerial promotion that he deserved due to him not being as mature as Squidward, but at least until the end of the movie anyway. But anyway, for a majority of the film, due to him being the prime suspect for stealing Neptune's crown, Mr. Krabs is frozen in solid ice. And underneath that frozen state, Mr. Krabs is counting on Spongebob to hurry back with said crown. Next is Mr. Krabs' rival and the movie's main villain, Sheldon J. Plankton, voiced by Mr. Douglas Lawrence. Now, ever since before I saw this movie in theaters, I thought it was pretty obvious that Plankton would be the villain here. 
due to the fact that he's been trying to steal the Krabby Patty formula about 25 times and always failed. So, for his plan Z, he steals King Neptune's crown, pins the blame on Mr. Krabs, and finally steals the formula. But that's not all. He also creates Chum Bucket Bucket Helmets with mind control devices in order to enslave everybody in Bikini Bottom, which in my opinion is Plankton's most evil act ever in the entire series. Now let's talk about the new characters in the movie, starting with King Neptune, voiced by Jeffrey Tambor, best known as Mayor Augustus Mayhew from How the Grinch Stole Christmas, The Wizard of Oz from The Muppets Wizard of Oz, and he voiced Bailiwick's brother Nigel from Sophia the First. Now, due to my experience with the series, I don't think I ever saw any episodes where King Neptune made an appearance, and to this day, I wonder why Steven Hillenburg had his animation team redesign him. Anyway, this version of Neptune is very brutish and tyrannical, and he's shown to be very ill-tempered and a strict leader who rules over the seven seas with an iron fist. Plus, Neptune is prone to anger when someone does something that makes him really angry and makes his citizens suffer constant, harsh, and unfair punishments. Also to note, Neptune's crown is very important to him, not only because it's a symbol of his authority, but it's because it covers his thinning head. When his crown is stolen, Neptune attempts to execute Mr. Krabs, who is framed for the crime, with the only evidence being a fake note saying that he did it, and a phone call saying that he sold it to Shell City. However, when SpongeBob volunteers to retrieve his crown, despite ridiculing him, Neptune gives him six days to return with his crown, otherwise Mr. Krabs will be burned to a crisp. Next we come to Neptune's daughter and my favorite character in the movie. Princess Mindy, voiced by Black Widow herself, Scarlett Johansson, who also got to be in the 2016 Jungle Book movie, Illumination Sing, Isle of Dogs, and Ghost in the Shell. Now, unlike her father, Mindy shows more love and compassion towards her and her father's subjects. Plus, since she's going to be Queen of the Ocean soon, she has memorized the names of all the fish in the sea. Also, I like that Mindy supports Spongebob by telling him about all the dangerous things that he'll be encountering while on the road to Shell City. And she also gives him and Patrick seaweed mustaches in order to encourage them to keep going. Finally, we come to Dennis, voiced by Alec Baldwin, best known from Tim Burton's Beetlejuice, The Cat in the Hat with Mike Myers, Madagascar Escape to Africa, Rock of Ages, and Rise of the Guardians. Now, Dennis is an assassin hitman hired by Plankton to kill SpongeBob and Patrick in order to prevent them from getting to Shell City alive. To me, Plankton was pretty clever to hire this guy in advance in case anyone would expose him as the real crown thief. And in my eyes, Dennis is a pretty dangerous character. I mean, he rips the mouths off of two hillbillies at the gas station, and he brutally assaults the thug tug leader, Victor. Plus, Dennis is equipped with a knife and biker boots with metal spikes. Yikes! Other actors in the movie include Jill Talley, Carolyn Lawrence, Mary Jo Catlett, Lori Allen, and Neil Ross. And now let's move on to my final words. Overall, the SpongeBob SquarePants movie is a great film in the SpongeBob trilogy, and it's got to be one of my favorite Nickelodeon animated movies ever. The story is fun and nostalgic, it has a good moral, the animation stays true to the show, the characters are fun, charming, and memorable, the voice acting from the veterans to the celebrities all do an amazing job, and to be quite honest, watching this movie again really makes me miss my childhood. But at the same time, I will never throw it away. Because, like I always keep saying, losing your childhood means losing yourself. And if I ever had kids, I would definitely share this movie with them, as well as the first few seasons, if possible. And so, I give this movie a full 100%. Well, that's all for now. Be sure to join me on St. Patrick's Day this Thursday, 
where we look at something truly incredible. Mustang Power. Mm -hmm.